Fantastic. Great. So as you guys read the title, I'm going to be talking about polyfills. Um, who here has heard of polyfills? <coughs> oh, wow. So, okay, go easy on me then. <laughs> um, all right. Um, you guys use polyfills regularly? All right, Josh does. Cool. Is that an E3 thing, Josh? IE11. Oh, okay. ABC supports IE11. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. So, uh, filling up on polyfills, and uh, that's me. That's me. That. Um, all right. So, um, I work as an Ember developer at a company called GBST. I recently moved to Brisbane uh, from Sydney to uh, work here as an Ember dev, and um, we're actually starting an Ember meetup, but we'll talk about that later or at the Ember meetup. So, um, polyfill. So, where does the name come from and what does it mean? So, um, <laughs> this is a, uh, so a wall with a hole in it. And uh, the paste that is being used is called polyfilla. So, Remy Sharp, um, a software dev, uh, was trying to think of a term to sort of um, fill up these holes in web browsers where functionality doesn't exist or these web browsers don't support certain functionality, as Josh pointed out, i11 probably doesn't do something, probably doesn't do a lot, and you need to uh, patch that um, so that you can um, make it absolutely flawless and clear and then paint over it or put a wallpaper over it with no holes in the background. Once it doesn't have any holes, you're free to paint on it or put a wallpaper on it as you wish. So, um, so there's actually a story on Remy Sharp's uh, blog where he says he was sitting in a coffee shop, as we all do um, in the United States, I guess, more than here, um, thinking with his laptop, thinking about um, what sh a, a term for this particular thing. He wanted to call it a shim, but he said that you know shimming is generally to do with APIs, and I don't think this is a proper term for it. He thought about progressive enhancement, uh, but you know it's not more. Um, of an enhancement, you're using, um, you're already using a baseline, um, which is JavaScript, and you're also using a latest technology, so it's not an enhancement as such. It's not a graceful degradation. So a graceful degradation, um, he decided not to call that, it's all fancy terms, because it doesn't have any native functionality in it. So um, he decided to call it polyfills um, after a product, I think you get in the UK, called polyfilla. And um, one other guy described it as regressive degradation. I thought I'll just put it in there. So wouldn't it be nice, so the reason we do this, wouldn't it be nice to develop um, in a future-proof way? So we should be able to develop with HTML5, APIs and scripts, create the methods and objects that we want um, without you know, having uh, to feel the sense to um, go back into the past, just develop with the latest stuff. And if we use polyfills, we can bring these um, browsers or these features in browsers up to date um, and then just paint over it as we want. So an example of a polyfill, can everybody see that? Yep. yep, cool. So an example of a polyfill is if you want is not a number. So you say uh, you use the number um, uh, method inside, uh, number module inside, uh, uh, JavaScript, and you write this little function, then you include it inside your script, and number dot is not a number, and it tells you. Now, the criticism to polyfills, uh, according to some people, is that this feels a lot like monkey patching the API, and that is a term that they use. Um, what happens if the um, polyfill that you've written is not spec compliant, or what happens if the API changes? So this group of people got together and, um, and sort of thought about it in another way. Instead of using the number uh, module inside JavaScript, why don't we just export a module altogether, not make it dependent on number. So a module dot exports um, return value is not equal to a value, and that becomes your um, isnan pony fill. So instead of having a poly fill, they call it a pony fill, and that is their official logo. It's because a pony is pure. Uh, poly, they claim polyfills are naughty as they patch native APIs, while pony fills are pure and do not affect the environment. 
<laughs> so, um, there are another group of people who still weren't happy with this and say, you know, what if we want to polyfill for an API that is yet to come, that is not yet standardized, or it's missing in ES6 specifications? So they decided to call it a polyfill. So probably polyfill. So um, an example of that is if you want to see JSON.load or JSON.save as native functions, um, you can use um, the JSON future polyfill, which is made by a organization called uh, Kiko Beats. So this in turn becomes a polyfill. So that's all I had today with polyfills, ponyfills, and polyfills. <laughs> <laughs>